recording. Okay, so um, so everyone who is from the community that joined, just a big thank you for uh, joining us. If you got up early, uh, thank you, and hopefully this time zone's helping others in India join us as well. Uh, we'll definitely do this again next year. Um, and so for the public board meeting, the few items that we have are just approving our minutes from the last public board meeting, which was September 28th. Um, um, then, Megan, can you zoom your screen slightly for viewers? Sure. Can you see that now? Perfect. Great. Um, and then um, I'll just ask the board if they have any updates to the um, trying to get down zoom so big it's going to take me a few minutes i put our dashboard in there and i just wanted to see if our board had any specific questions um, that they wanted to ask in the public forum uh, and then let me scroll back up that's big um, and then there's the uh the technical advisory committee wanted to give an update we wanted to be more transparent now that we're moving forward with the technical advisory committee and working on our tooling and Angie Byron has joined us. She's on the TAC, and um, we have put out a blog post announcing this um, and kind of talking a little bit about what we're trying to achieve. Uh, and the TAC's made some progress, and they want to talk about the roadmap and some of their assessments. Um, we will be talking about this some more in executive session, but it'll be just more about getting some more direction from the board so we make sure we're all aligned on the next steps. Um, and then last but not least, uh, we want to thank Denise and Rob for their years of service on the board and giving us a lot of guidance and insight. And so Dries will be um, saying those thank yous as well. Uh, so with that, um, I just need to ask the board if kind of to start the motion to approve the meeting minutes from September 28th. And if you recall, I just linked to them. It was primarily an update um, in uh, the public setting uh, at Dublin, where we covered uh, updates on DrupalCon and membership and the Drupal.org front page. Do we have a motion to approve? I, I, <laughs> I move to approve the, um, the, the meeting minutes. All right. Does everyone approve them? Mike is nodding his head. No. Yeah. Is Sorry, anyone not in favor? Yeah, so I'll second. Okay. So the um, so it's moved and, and seconded that we will approve the meeting minutes of the last board meeting. Um, anyone in favor say um, aye. If not in favor, say no, please. Aye. 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 All right. So can I just confirm who that was? I, I, I definitely heard Dries and Denise. Aye, Shamla. OK. Also me, Addie. Hey. OK, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, well, we do have an executive session where we're going to be diving quite deeply into a few different areas where we're just going to discuss how to move some things forward. But um, what I'll be sending to the um, public after this is a blog post with this board packet and our dashboard uh, that will just give them all an update of the work we're doing and our progress towards it. And you'll recognize this dashboard. Um, and, uh, what, you know, I know I give this out to the board every two weeks. Just wanted to see if there are any questions that you had for me at this time. Nope, looks good to me. Okay. Can I just confirm real quick? Um, sorry, I see, I'm just catching up with a minute. I see Samir's on the line. Samir, did you uh, support that previous motion? Just for my notes. Uh, no, I'm going to abstain. I wasn't there. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Samir. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Megan. No, no worries. Um, right, so just checking in to see if you had any questions. So far, Addie has said no. Anyone else? 
Okay. Well then what I'll be doing with this is sending it out to the public in that blog post. And then if the community has questions about our work, then I'll be answering it through comments there. All right. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to hand this over to Angie, Angie Byron, who has generously agreed to donate time uh, to be on the technical advisory committee. So first big thank you to Angie. Really appreciate everything you're doing for us. Thank you. I'm happy to help. So. Good. So maybe you could just give a quick overview of what the TAC is and, and your charter and um, and then kind of go through your presentation of your where you are in the process and your findings so far. Sure. Yep. So um, so the TAC was formed. The TAC stands for Technical Advisory Committee. We were formed um, when uh, the uh, Drupal Association went through some organization changes and um, no longer had a CTO and uh, reduced, you know, some some of the technical staff. We were there to sort of do a multifaceted um, number of things, but you know, one is look into options that help the uh, community tools be more sustainable. Another is to kind of help uh, Tim, who's now leading the engineering team over there. You know, like work on uh, prioritization and uh, you know validation of of different things that we're working on and making sure that you know that's. Uh, just, just validating that that's you know the best way to uh, help the community. Um, we also are there to help you know any questions that Megan might have you know about uh, the way the technical uh, side of, of Drupal.org um, works. Some of the strategic uh, things that we you know can help with that that way. So it's sort of a, a blended approach. We we help. We're just here to help basically with <laughs> anything we can with uh, with Drupal.org or with other uh, technology decisions in lieu of uh, in lieu of having someone on staff who. Um, who you know helps at that level, you know, and obviously the the technical staff that we have there are are awesome, um, and doing great work on Drupal.org and improving it and things like that. But we sort of help out just at a little bit uh, higher level, higher strategic level. So, yeah, that's that's kind of what we do. <laughs> so, right, we super appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we we appreciate being asked to to help. So I think if I do, um, so and let's do a little bit like this. Can you guys see this okay? Yeah. Yes, we can. yes, we can. Excellent. Okay. So uh, what I wanted to do was just give a short update on where we're at with uh, various things. Um, so on the gigantic roadmap here, um, uh, actually some background. Uh, what we're talking about in this, uh, in this presentation is the Drupal.org development tools. So um, as most people know, uh, we host our own development tools. They're written in Drupal. Um, other than the test bot is written in a bunch of different things. Um, they are uh, costly to run. We have to upgrade them every time that there's a new version of Drupal, um, you know, various things like that. And so the board asked us to look into um, developer tools stuff and see if there might be other options that we could um, explore that maybe would be, um, would still, you know, give us the things that we really need to make the, you know, community well-functioning because, you know, obviously one of the Drupal Association's biggest roles is empowering the contributor community. Um, but see if there are ways to do that through, you know, partnering with other organizations or, you know, through, um, you know, different types of investments we could make in that sort of thing. And so this presentation is about that. Um, so just to give a general idea of the roadmap, we're still pretty early on in the process, as you can see. Um, what we've started doing is we've started researching different options. We um, have actually had a, a nice uh, th uh, two-day retreat in Portland a couple weeks ago to, you know, dig in with the staff more and figure things out. Um, and now where we are at is we're presenting our research um, on the various options to the community for feedback. We're not yet uh, making a recommendation, but we are, we've done enough stuff right now that we, you know, know quite a bit. Um, and then as you can see, there's a bunch more stuff after this. We have to make sure staff's on board. Um, we have to make sure that, you know, we give Megan enough information in order to, uh, you know, approve whatever the leading recommendation is. Um, and then when we get the, the process approved, then we have a whole bunch of work that you have to do to, you know, figure out what the project entails, figure out what we're going to need in order to get it done, this kind of thing. So, um, so we're still early on in the process, but we are making progress. So that's really good news. Um, the last update we made was a public um, uh, blog post on Drupal.org where we, um, you know, kind of informed the community that we were doing this, that the TAC existed, that this is, you know, what we're doing. Um, we're looking into different options. Since then, uh, and that was maybe a month ago, um, maybe a month and a half ago, we narrowed our evaluation to basically three options. Either one, 
we, um, we kind of double down on expanding our existing tools. So that would be the concept of issue workspaces that Ryan uh, over on uh, the Drupal Association tech team has been working on for probably pretty much as long as he's worked there. <laughs> so um, it's the idea of getting pull request like functionality uh, into our existing development tool stack. Um, the second is a partner opportunity um, with GitHub. Um, pretty much everyone in the developer sphere knows who GitHub is. They're, they're a big deal. Um, and then the uh, third option is GitLab. Uh, and GitLab is really interesting because they're an open source GitHub alternative. Um, and um, Eliran from, from GitHub, or GitLab, I'm sorry, actually came to DrupalCon to talk with us. And that was a really awesome uh, meeting. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, we also spent two days deep diving with staff on all of these different things um, to try and, you know, get them uh, kind of assuage their concerns that they might have and, 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 uh, and you know, get, get them to, you know, look into any hard blockers that would prevent either of the partners from being explored. And uh, that went well. So I'm just going to quick whip through um, some high level things. So our existing tools look a bit like this. It's very Drupal-y. It's very well integrated into our site. Um, you know, all, everybody logs in once. Um, all the stuff is right there. Um, but on the other hand, it is our special snowflake stuff. And so it, it, prevents a, it presents a barrier of opportunity or entry to, um, to people who know the other tools really well. Um, so the, the biggest uh, pro, I would say, with our existing tools is that um, they're really built around this concept of collaboration versus forking. Um, collaboration is really part of our DNA. We have a lot of uh, volunteer uh, activity that happens, and so it's very, very typical for someone to start a patch, you know, in 2012, and then get busy with other things and go off the map, and for someone to pick it up again in 2013, a completely different person who doesn't know the first person and keep working on things and slowly get the thing through to a uh, resolution. Um, we also have a really kick-ass um, issue queue that has um, great tools for categorizing issues, um, searching, you know, pulling up lists, that kind of stuff. And then obviously, since this is our, our bread and butter, the staff that, that we have knows this stack really well and knows where they can push it and this kind of thing. On the other hand, we have a bunch of cons. I'm not going to read this whole slide to you, but, you know, some of the things are, you know, because it is our special stack, it's, it's really hard for new people to get, you know, on board. We also lack some of the modern things in, in other developer tools, like a lot of modern developer tools have like in-place editing of, or inline editing of the code file, so you don't even need to do anything with Git. And like, for example, when I helped Megan with her uh, patch at Midwest Developer Summit, you know, that took about five hours or something. And had we done that on, you know, something like GitHub, it would have taken about four seconds. So, <laughs> you know, things like that, especially for documentation, uh, theming contributions and stuff like that is a big deal. Um, and then the patch-based workflow, I'd say, is probably the number one blocker. It's, it's, it's just very clunky compared to what people are used to. Um, and then the, the sunk cost of having to upgrade the tools every so often, um, where we do a whole bunch of work that no one can see any user-facing benefit of. That's a hard pill to swallow every three or four years. Uh, GitHub looks like this. It's really kind of slick, nice looking. It's got some nice stuff like you know, inline diffs and the ability to comment on pull requests, this kind of thing. It's uh, pretty sweet. Um, probably the biggest pro of GitHub is it has seven bazillion users. That's a, uh, you know, a metric number. I, I take a lot of time to measure that. Um, and then pretty much everybody out there has a GitHub account at this point. I don't think that was true the first couple of times we were looking at these options, but it's definitely true today. Um, you know, one of the, the, the cons that we have is it's a, it's a closed sourced uh, proprietary system. It's also remotely hosted. So we have very little control um, over, you know, the feature roadmap of this thing because, you know, we're not the biggest, you know, fish in their pond by a long shot. Um, they also have pretty limited issue queue um, compared to what we're used to, which that's not great. Um, and for the most part, GitHub hasn't really been innovating rapidly uh, for the last few years up until recently. Um, and the recent changes have been really great, um, but, but you know, it's sort of like out of our control how fast or how slow the roadmap goes, so that's a little bit concerning. GitLab is the, uh, the next one, um, and they largely are why GitHub has been <laughs> innovating lately, because um, GitLab, as you can see, looks pretty similar to GitHub. It has a lot of the same uh, you know, developer patterns and things like that, which makes it a good um, alternative. Um, it's also open source, which is really great. It's written in Ruby, so not PHP, um, but our own tools being hosted in, or written in PHP hasn't really led to a mass you know, bunch of people contributing to it, so that's not that much of a... Uh, 
a barrier. It's also cool because it can be remotely hosted or it can be um, installed on premise if we wanted to do that ourselves. Um, easy onboarding because it looks and works a lot like GitHub. Um, and then another cool thing is we can potentially offload TestBot on this thing as well, which is a uh, kind of recurring monthly cost that we have. Um, because of it's a very close replica of GitHub, it pretty much has the same cons as GitHub. Um, we found the performance of GitLab.com's hosted projects a little bit suboptimal, but we also, you know, could could work with hosting our own instance perhaps and, and get around that. So. So those are the three options. We have this like incredibly big, uh, I was gonna call it the spreadsheet of doom, but I was informed by Megan that now we call things spreadsheets of opportunity. So we have a spreadsheet of opportunity that compares and contrasts all of the different functionality of these different services. Um, and it's still kind of getting some touch up, so we, we're not sharing this publicly yet, but, um, but rest assured that um, myself from the TAC, as well as um, you know, all of the DA tech staff sat down over a couple days to really dig into this and, and figure out so we make a good decision here. So um, I think that's what I've got. Oh, next steps. Uh, next steps is we're gonna prepare the community communication to kind of just give a community update on this is the three options that we're looking at and here's why. Um, and then we're gonna be uh, recommending that staff be allocated to continue familiarizing themselves with the various options because um, you know, it's one thing for TAC to make a recommendation, but staff is the ones who are actually going to have to, you know, do the legwork on this stuff. And so it's important that they feel good about that um, and feel like they have answers to all their questions and this kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, as the executive director makes her decision, we will be there to advise and um, answer any questions. So that's pretty much our update. Did anyone have any questions? Looks good. Thanks, Angie. All right, great. Thanks, yeah, everyone. Great work. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> great, thanks. I can't wait to see where this thanks. goes next. Yeah, yeah likewise. <laughs> All right. Ooh, that was cool. Ah, Tooling. <laughs> Never thought I'd be so excited about Tooling. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, thanks, everyone. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Enjoy your vacation, Angie. Okay, well, we have one last item on the agenda. Um, and Therese, I think you wanted to say a few words to uh, Denise and Rob who are, have, uh, their seats are expiring and they've done some really great work with for us. You're and, muted, Therese. And you're on mute. Typical, sorry. <laughs> um, no, yeah, it's kind of a sad time uh, in, in many ways because you know, Denise I've known for many, many years and has been with the Drupal Association for, I don't know, six years now, I think, five years. Yeah. Um, and it's really, really helped us, I think, transform. Um, if you think about all of the changes that we've gone through in the last, you know, five years and, and more, um, you know, her, her expertise in open source, um, her expertise in... Um, open source leaderships and communities um, has, has really helped us. Um, I think we've learned a lot from other communities uh, and we've learned that primarily through Denise. <laughs> um, and so she was been, she's been our gateway to the rest of the world, I think, uh, in many ways, and that's been very helpful. Uh, more, most recently, she connected us with open source uh, organizations like the Linux Foundation and really helped us um, you know, get close to them so we can uh, learn from them and talk to them. Uh, she has educated about, educated us and the staff really about open source licensing. Lots of fun conversations there. Um, and you know, has, has yeah, generally done a lot to help us out. So you know, thank you Denise for, for everything you've done in the last uh, five years and even before. I had a great yeah, time. Thank you, Thanks, everybody. Yeah, you will be missed, but hopefully we'll see you again in the future. Um, and then, thank you. Next, yeah. I'm not sure, if anyone wants to add something or not, just adding thanks. Of course, <laughs> you guys know where to find me. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next person is Rob. I don't think Rob is on the call, unfortunately. Um, but Rob has been with the um, with the Drupal Association for three years. Um, so for one term, um, we recruited Rob because we wanted to have more input in how large customers uh, think about Drupal and how we can 
do things that help large customers, you know, adopt Drupal. And, and Rob at the time came from NBC uh, and, the, and the media space in general and has, has done exactly that. You know, he's helped the Drupal Association, uh, both uh, the board and the staff to understand and welcome uh, large organizations, large customers of Drupal into our community, which is a non-trivial thing. Uh, we're a special animal and it's not always easy to understand how open source works and how they can contribute to open source. And so Rob's uh, help with that has been uh, tremendous. Um, one example of that is the media summit that he created at DrupalCons where he sort of championed that and brought together leaders from the media industry and entertainment industry uh, and get them together um, to talk about Drupal and open source and how they can collaborate. Um, and so that's been very effective, I would say, as demonstrated by the fact that most media companies use Drupal. <laughs> um, so thanks, Rob. Seth, you're not here, but maybe you'll, you'll listen to the recording. Maybe send him a nice, a quick email um, after the call if you guys want. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I just wanted to add that, um, you know, just especially whether I was in my previous role or my current role, I just really appreciate your support, Denise and, and Rob, I'll tell him separately, but I've just learned a ton from you and um, you've just opened up a, a whole new world for us to see into and to understand um, just how to navigate. And that's just so important for us and, and these kinds of roles to figure out where we go next. Um, and I just want you to know you're always considered part of the family. We'd like to give you a DrupalCon pass for life. So that way you can join us whenever you can. Nice. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Angie, you're going to get one too. We're going to give it back to old board members too. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, sweet. Anyway, cheers, Denise. This is all I got. But, you know, like anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Angie. I know, there's awesome. life, I know there's life after board service. I hope everybody else that's hearing this uh, takes advantage of the term limit idea. If, if only for a year to recharge, it's, it's a big deal to take the time off. I know you know that, Angie. I do know that. <laughs> they pull me back in anyway. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway. Well, but that's, it's by design, right? But you've had a year to, to do other things and, that, and, and you come back fresh. Yeah. That's kind of the point. It's good. So, so, so when well, are you coming back, Denise, then? So a year from now? <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Talk to me next year. <laughs> One of the great things about what Denise brought to the table, sorry, I'm just thinking, reflecting, and it's like, you know, as we all know, there's ups and downs, right? Some of the ups are, you know, high up there. I think Drupal cons are a huge highlight, and then the downs can be pretty down um, as well. And I don't know, I felt like one of the things you always brought to us, Denise, is like this, this idea, like, you know, there's all these other projects, and you know what? We're not the only ones that have some challenges. Um, and maybe sometimes we're even better off than other projects. So that's been, that's been really helpful, at least for me. Yeah, no, generally Drupal, Drupal has done really, really well. And you guys, uh, looking in your own fishbowl, it always seems like things are, are dire, you know. But, uh, but actually, you do pretty well. You, you, uh, you make a fair amount of money um, to, for a nonprofit uh, to keep the lights on and everything. And, and uh, streamlining the tooling is really going to help make that money be spent effectively, which is great. And, and um, the other thing that I feel like I have at least a part in that I'm pretty happy about is the uh, issue credit idea, mm. which started as, oh my gosh, we can't give organizations commit bits and turned into this other, this other whole thing that's actually driving some interesting good and bad behaviors, but, they're, but it's driving behavior and that's pretty interesting. So. I really, I had a great time. I learned a ton um, and got to try some ideas out with you guys. And all of that is, is really fun for me. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. You will be Thanks. next. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. All right. Well, thank you again. And also that concludes our board meeting. And now we'll be... Uh, Moving into executive session, so for those who are not on the board or the staff or volunteers who are on the agenda, <laughs> um, this is always that awkward moment where I'm like, thank you so much for joining, please hang up. <laughs> <laughs>